שמע ישראל, one of the most, the most, the pledge of allegiance of the Jewish people is שמע ישראל. Today we will learn about this line, just this line, that's it. שמע ישראל, אדוני אלוהינו, אדוני אחד. That's the line that every Jewish person knows. With this, thousands of Jews died with this on their lips. Before, millions of Jews, before you, a person passes away, he says the Shema. But he says it every morning and every night. From where it's coming? It's coming from the parsha of this week. Moses says, Shema Israel, and then he goes, continues thereafter. But the Medrash tells us that Shema Israel started much earlier before that. The most common explanation that everybody knows, it's written in the, in the Talmud too. And Jacob, before he died, wanted to give out the secret of the future of the Jewish people to his children. And suddenly, it disappeared on them. You know, sometimes you want to say to somebody something, and you just... Whoosh. But by Jacob, it wasn't just that he wanted to say something. It was a prophecy, and he saw that he lost the connection, he lost the prophecy. Then he told, he was thinking maybe God did not allow him to, re to reveal the secret of the future because his kids are not all believers in God. Why should he think like this? He knew that his, fa his grandfather, Abraham, had two sons, Isaac and Ishmael. One believed in God, one didn't. Isaac had two sons, Jacob, him, and Esau. One believed in God, one, one didn't continue the Jewish tradition. He said, yes, 12 boys and one girl. Maybe one of them is a little, is a little bit, not so, not all the way there in the belief of God. Then he asked them all, he turned them all around his bed. It was before his death. He asked them, do you all believe in God? They answered them, Shema Israel, Jacob had two names, had two, had two names, Jacob and Israel. Told them, here, O oh Israel, here, Israel, God is our God, God is one. When he heard from his kids that they all believe in God, he answered, Baruch Shem Kevod Machuto Olam Vaed, may, God, may the name of God please be blessed forever and ever. That's the first place that the Shema comes from. That's in the Talmud and in the Medrash, before Moses wrote it in the Torah. Now, Shema, what means the word Shema? Shema means ear, that's what you think. <laughs> but Shema is much more than, the, than ear. We say in the, in the Ten Commandments, we say bef in, before the Jewish people received the Ten Commandments, they said, Naaseh and Shema. They told God, we will do and we will listen. How can you do before you listen? Obviously, the word listen doesn't just mean ear, because they already had to hear, to do, they had to hear what to do. Nishma means we'll pay attention. We will listen. Listen, listen. We will internalize. That's not Nishma. Is. Nishma means to really listen. In English, listen up, I guess. Is <laughs> to pay attention. Yeah, yeah listen up. It's mm -hmm. true. Then Shema Israel means listen. Listen, O Israel. We tell to ourselves, we are speaking to ourselves every day. Listen, pay attention to what you say, to, what you, to what's going on around you. God is the only God. That's what Shema means. Now the word Shema is an acronym of three words. Seu marom eneichem. It's a verse in the Bible. Lift up your eyes and see who created all of this. Now what does this mean? Usually, our, our, our faces are only in the cell phone. People go like this in the cell phone. You see so many little videos of people falling into water <laughs> and fall off things and falling in things just because they were only busy with their cell phone. What's the difference between a human being and an animal? A human being walks straight. An animal, the head and the rear is on the same level. The animal's face is looking only down. The animal is only busy with his food, with, with herself. The human being is created. He can lift up his eyes. 
and see the creation of the world. Every human being, when he thinks about God, what is he doing? He looks up. Naturally. Nature of human beings, they look up. Somehow they understand God is above them. Even God is everywhere. God is not only above. But they look up to God. That's Seuma Homenechem. Lift up your eyes. Don't be busy with the regular daily life, with our mundane, with our nonsense, being busy with the, all the things that aggravate us. Lift up your eyes and see the creation of the universe. See God. See above you. See there's so much more than just your little things. That's why there is a custom that in synagogues there is a mitzvah to have big windows. There's a custom to have big windows. You can see the sky. When you pray, you should be able to see sky and remember God. That's why in our synagogue we do not have stained glass windows. Beside another small technical problem that costs a lot of money, <laughs> but the real reason is, even if somebody would give them any money, it would convince them to do it at something different. We don't need stained glass windows. I don't know from where this custom is coming, for sure not from Moses. Because from other sources, we can see and look in the sky and remember God. There is a story about a Hasidic Jew in Russia who was a wagon driver. He had an awesome buggy. Once he came, I think, to the fifth Chabad Rebbe, the fourth Chabad Rebbe, and he told him, Rebbe cried. He had a private audience, told him, Rebbe, I waste my life. I sit in the wagon the whole day. I see the street. I, my, my, my run with my old, I see the horse in front of me. I don't have time to learn, to daven, to think. Nothing. The Rebbe told them, I envy you. I told them, you envy me for what? He says, while you are on the wagon, you can always fulfill the mitzvah, of the command, the order of the Torah, sh of the Shema, Seum Aromei Nechem, lift up your eyes. You're outside, you always see the sky, you can always remember God. This man told the story to the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe when he was a little child. When he said the story, he was so emotional. These words of the Rebbe gave him life, gave him purpose. That he was, he was not anymore a wagon driver. He was somebody who fulfilled every minute of his day the, the, the order of the Torah, lift up your eyes. He said even when he retired from his job, he made sure he buys a house with a big window and he put his desk by the window. He should always be able to fulfill what the Rebbe told him, lift up your eyes. That's the first word of the Shema. Seu marom enechem, lift up your eyes. Then comes Hashem, Shema Israel, Iro Israel. Now Israel, there is Jacob has two names, Jacob and Israel. Jacob represents the bottom of the of the hill. The hill. He comes to the word Ekev. Israel comes to the word Li Rosh. Rosh means Ed. Sometimes the Jewish people are in a state of Jacob. No. They are busy with their ill. Now a little down. Sometimes we are Israel, we are above, we are Li Rosh. During the week, the Jews, Jewish people are called Jacob, and Shabbat we are called Israel. We are elevated. The children are called Jacob, because Jacob, when he was a child, he was called only Jacob. The name Israel he got when? Later in his life, when he was an adult. Hero Israel, listen Israel, elevates, God is elevating us. Hero Israel. Be head, be a rosh. Elevate yourself. After you do the Shema, you can elevate yourself. When you look up, it's Israel. You're above. Hashem Elokeinu. God is our God. What does this mean, God is our God? It means to say, you know, when the Amida starts, Baruch Atah Hashem, what's the next word? Elokeinu, Elokei Avoteinu, right? God and God of our fathers. Now, if you, if I would, well, where was God for, who, whose God he was first? My God or the God of my fathers? He was first the God of my fathers. Then he was my God. Wouldn't it be more appropriate to say, 
ברוך אתה השם, אלוקי אבותינו, God of our fathers, ואלוקינו, and my God, and our God. Why we start the prayer from the Amida, blessed are you God, our God, and God of our fathers. Why our God? Something very important lays there. Our God is my God. Not just God of my father. Not just the God, oh yeah, it's my father's God, my Zaydi's God, my great grandfather's God. Maybe he's also my God. No, 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 he's your God. You know, many times people come for bar mitzvahs. I tell them, you have to buy your son a pair of film. It costs $300. If you want better, $500. Everybody suddenly remembers that he has his grandfather's film. <laughs> he brings out this old film, the falling apart film. And he gives me, he says, here, I want to give him. It's so meaningful to us. I want my son to put him up. I told him, really? You give him your grandfather's pair of pens for the bar mitzvah. Not that film. That film, we want to give him new. It's his God. It's a new God. It's his personal. It's not his grandfather's God. The old film, he should feel the Judaism is smelly and old and old and falling apart. That's not the Judaism we want to give our children. A fresh, new Judaism. Nice film, a nice talus. Your old film, you can keep it and look of it and remember your connection. But to your children, you give everything. It's their God. They are starting the life, their own personal relationship with God. Hashem Elokeinu, our God. Then comes Hashem Echad. God is one. Now, when you say God is one, it's dangerous. Because if there is one, it means there is two. Number one, two, and three, right? Wouldn't be more correct to say God, in Hebrew, God Yachid. Mm -hmm. God is the only one. Would be in English God, Senior. singular God. Senior. Why we say God Echad? Hashem Echad. God is, God is one. If God is one, it can be God too. Why we chose the word one? Because it's more, we are not here just to say that God is one and there is no only God. That's simple. That's obvious. There is no other God. But you want to say something more than that. Then there is no other identity independent of God. Everything is a part of God. Nothing exists in the world out of God. Nobody can do whatever he wants without God giving him permission, God, God making him do it. Satan is a part of God and every evil thing on earth and Hitler was created by God and operated by God. We will not go into the whole explanation. Everybody starts screaming, how dear God, all these questions and answers and all of this is nice and fine. The bottom line is and that's we need to remember very well. God is one means there is nothing on earth that can operate without God. If God cannot control something, that is not God. God is in control completely. And everything and anything. And everything is only happens what God wants. That God is one. Now I want to tell you something very interesting. In the in the Torah. When it's written, the letter Shema Israel Hashem Echad, in the, the letter Shema is written from three letters, Shin Mem Ayin. The Ayin is larger than the regular letters. In the Torah itself, in the, in the scroll, when you read the Ayin, you'll see it in the Chomesh too, it's a larger letter. The Dalet of the Echad is also larger. Two letters in the, word of the, in the, in the line of the Shema, in this sentence, are larger than the rest of them. Why is it? Now in the Torah there is some places, usually there is one size letters. Sometimes there is smaller letters, like the Aleph of Vaikra, the beginning of the book of Leviticus is a small Aleph. So there is a few letters small and a very few letters larger, seven letters I think. What, what is these two letters tell us? When you, com when you put together the letter Ayn and the letter Dalet, and you put them together, which word in Hebrew will come out? Aid. Aid. Aid means? Witness. Witness. What does this mean? God says in the Bible, the prophet says, Atem Eidai Neum Hashem. God says, you are my witnesses. You. Everyone on this table. 
is God witnesses. Every Jew that walks on earth is a statement that God exists. Why? Because if not for God, we wouldn't be around. Who didn't want to kill the Jews? Who didn't want to annihilate the Jews? Who didn't want to get rid of them? From Egypt to Amen to Hitler and another thousand in between. If we are here, let us testimony that it's only because of God. That every Jew is a living witness that God exists. No matter where the Jew is, he might be in church. He might think that he covers up his Judaism and nobody knows that he's Jewish. He doesn't really know that everybody in church knows that he's Jewish. He's the only one who thinks that nobody knows. <laughs> Even if he's in church and people think about them, they say this guy exists only because of God. If not, he wouldn't be around. That every Jew or his existence is a witness that God exists. We are living and talking statements, witnesses that there is a, there is a God on earth. That's aid. Everyone has to remember, I'm a witness of God. I better behave like this. If you flip the letters, you put the dalet before the ayin, what will come out? Da. Da. What's da? Yes, no. Da means to know. To know, there is a verse in the Bible who said, Da et eloke avicha. Know the God of your father. Also from the prophet. What means to know God of your father? What means to know God? What means to know a person? How many people you know? On your Facebook, you have 232 friends. How many of them you, you can call them and you are in trouble? One, maybe. It could be not even one. You know. What means when you know? You know, usually your wife tells you after many years, now I really know you. But usually it's not in a good context. <laughs> <laughs> now I really know you means I know how bad you are. <laughs> she doesn't even have to tell you that. You understand by yourself. <laughs> what is to know somebody? We met many people. We have acquaintance with this. With how many people we know? means to know on an intimate level. To really get to know somebody. There is a story about the previous Lubavitch Rebbe, somebody once waited for him and he walked out of the room for a big for bringing and told him, he jumped, he says, Rebbe, I knew your father. The Rebbe stopped, looked at him and told him, you know my father, you saw my father. You know my father. To know means to get ready to know somebody. Every human being is born a believer in God. He really needs to be brain brainwashed not to believe in God. Naturally, a child believes in a higher power. That's the nature of human beings. They made a survey in, in, a, in Russia after 70 years of communism, and they, and they, and they proved that 60% believed in a, said they believe in a higher power. We're all born believers. What we do, the journey of life is to get to know God. That's what the journey of life is. Every day we get to know him better. Think about yourself. You know God better today than 10 years ago. You have an intimate relationship with him. You have more trust in God than you had 10 years ago. You have a better connection. You feel him closer to you. There is a story about Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai. He was the leader of the Jewish people before the destruction, by the time of the destruction of the second temple. He lived to be 120 years. He was very influential in Jewish history until today. Very, very righteous man. Before he died, his disciples were sitting, uh, standing around his bed and told him, Rabbi, tell us something meaningful. He told them, I wish you should fear God as much as you fear men, human beings. They were a little insulted, you know. <laughs> if he was under the 20, the disciples were 93 and a half, you know what I mean? <laughs> You're telling them to fear God like other people? Then he told them, before somebody is doing something, he looks around to make sure nobody sees him. What do you mean with that? You see, you see when, you're in, when you are around people, you behave more polite. You, live, be, you eat like more like a man. You talk like a man. You behave more. What does this mean? If you would feel that God is like another person by the table, if you have an awareness of God like this, if you would know God, you would be more relaxed. You wouldn't be so worried. You will, oh, what's going to happen today? God is right here, sitting next to you. Everything will be good. If you would have this awareness, that's what he wanted to tell us. That means 
to get to know God, get to know to have such an intimate relationship, like you know a spouse, you have such a close relationship. That Shema Israel, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad.